Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here again. We finished the video where I was just talking about the, the chopping axes and today I want to show you the broad axes that I have. Each one of these are tuned up. They've been restored. They've been Some of them have been retempered. Uh, I've got leather sheaths made for them. Now I don't want you to look too much at my leather work. I don't claim to be a leather worker. I just make something that's kind of functional. It does cover the edge up these axes are really really sharp I want to start with this one down here now I've already showed you this axe once but I want to show you a little bit more about it we talked about the tool steel and this being a English what I was told was an English style axe I have a hickory handle in it and this handle I know you can't actually feel it but it's it's not real real smooth and it gives me a little bit more of a grip because a lot of times when I'm hewing I sweat in my hands a lot and things get a little bit slippery but this axe uh, as I said I really come to like this axe um, there's no tool maker name on it anywhere uh, there is a B that's stamped in in the pole there I'm, I got this axe in Pennsylvania and uh, I made a handle. This axe, actually, this handle was made pretty quick. I, I was so excited about this axe, I wanted to, to try it out. And once I got it tried, you know, tried it out a little bit, I realized that the edge was just a little bit soft. And I have a friend who knows how to retemper tools, and he's retempered lots of stuff for me and, and guys that I've worked with. But this axe is, uh, like I say, it's an English style axe. I've really gotten to where I like it. There's something that I want to show you about broad axes, and I'll just show you with this particular axe. A lot of people think that they're perfectly flat on the back side. Well, they are to a point uh, that they're fairly flat. Now, I reworked the back side of this axe. It had a double bevel. Uh, there was actually a bevel on the on the back side of it, and I knew that I could get it retempered if I got it too hot and I took a grinder and a belt sander and I worked this back down quite a bit to get rid of the bevel from here to, to the actual cutting edge and I've got it where it's pretty flat now there is a little bit of a concave right there between the actual edge and the, and the pole of it but also axes, or broad axes have a little bit of a curve from front to back you don't want something that's perfectly flat because that makes it really difficult to hew with you're going to be digging in either at the heel of the axe or the front of the axe and broad axes good usable broad axes will have a, a little bit of a curve but that makes it more easy to control when you're hewing which in another video we uh, show you how to actually hew with an axe I control with my hand. I'm right-handed, so if you look at these axes, you can see they're they're all they all have a right-hand handle in them, and I can kind of control the in and out of where the axe, the actual part, the axe that actually is is hitting the wood doing the cutting. I can control that with my with my left hand, and with that being curved somewhat, I can I can keep control of what I'm doing. I really love that little axe. And when I got this axe, I, I think I gave 20 bucks for it. It was not much more than a boat anchor when I got it. It had been terribly abused. The pole had just mushroomed over where somebody had beat on it. And the tool steel had a half inch chunk knocked out of it. And I had to take that whole edge back and totally rework this edge here, put a new bevel on it and completely just about start over with it. I spent many hours uh, reworking this axe to get it to where I could actually do anything with it and then I had to have it also retempered. The same fellow that retempered this did all of my tempering for me. But actually this axe is the one even though it was in the worst condition when I got it it's the axe that I've used the most over the years in hewing. It's the axe that I used when I built her house and all of the other uh, log buildings that I worked on and I really love this little axe. It's about a six and a half pound which is perfect for me 
uh, I don't like a real real heavy axe it has a pecan handle this handle is made out of hickory this is hickory and this axe now this is a special axe to me it is made by Powell Tool Company it's a it's a pretty heavy axe I made a handle for this years and years ago this axe belonged to my wife's great-grandfather I bought it at their at a farm estate sale years and years and years ago I didn't have to do anything to this axe except clean it up and uh, make a handle for it and sharpen it and it hews really good this little axe here is an axe that I got in Pennsylvania it's a smaller broad axe and it uh, was made by Brady and Son and when I got it I made a handle now I always want to make a black walnut handle now I'll tell you black walnut is not a real good wood to use for a handle because it's a little bit brittle but it was it, it made a beautiful handle and there again I had to have it retempered and it's, it's got quite a bit of tool still left in it but in talking about the black walnut handle when when I'm swinging a broad axe I'm not really whaling with it I'm just shaving with it uh, it's not like I'm using a, a chopping axe now this axe here is another axe that I found in Pennsylvania that was given to me by a friend of mine up there and it's Simmons and Company this is a, a real heavy broad axe but it's a really good axe and you can see it's got quite a bit of tool steel on it now this is a American style axe and it has a hickory handle now I've used this just a little bit but it's just a little more than I like to swing it's just a real heavy heavy axe uh, if you were pretty much of a muscular fella or a pretty much of a hoss you could handle this axe but I'm not that big of a person so I like something that's a little bit more like these three axes here are a little bit more in my weight range but there again it has a hickory handle and you can see all of these handles have a have an offset in them and that's to protect the user's knuckles when you're when you're hewing also I have a, a little broad hatchet here now I've, I've seen questions on uh, on different channels where they were talking about the axes about the use of the broad hatchet uh, this I've used this when I was shaping a handle or doing something where I was going to be uh, working at, at a at a shaving horse and I'm not sure that it was actually necessary but you can see uh, I made a handle that had an offset to it which kind of protected my hand not that it was that necessary but there again it's preference of the user now I've already showed this axe to you once but it is I like that pattern that uh, curved handle with the fawn's foot on the end I like I just like the way that looks and feels in my hand you can kind of tell that that was the pattern that I used to make these other handles for these broad axes it uh, may not be exactly the same curve but it's pretty close now I wouldn't say that it would be necessary absolutely for these handles to be shaped like this there again it's my personal preference they could be a straight handle and just slightly bent out to where you're not catching your your hands but there again with, with the handle will determine how well you can use the axe how comfortable it will be to use or how awkward now I got on the internet yesterday and I uh, was just searching for broad axes uh, reproduction broad axes old broad axes for sale and I found a lot of them but what I would tell you as I showed you in those in the chopping axes kind of what to stay away from this actually is the first broad axe that I ever bought and it was a there again pretty much is just a boat anchor it uh, it's badly rusted and somebody had filed another bevel on the back of it now if you run across something like this unless you just wanted something just to hang on the wall to look at I would not recommend buying an axe in this kind a broad axe in this kind of shape because it's, it's just going to be too much work I feel like to actually get it where you could ever use it you'd have to have more metal welded on and the whole configuration reworked these axes have a curved back from front to back this one has a little bit more than that one 
and it's it's fairly flat that way there's just a little bit of a bevel very 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 slight from right about here to the edge it's very very slight so you could pr pretty much call this a flat back this axe here which was my wife's great grandfather's axe there again it has the, the curve from the front to the back and it's it's got a little bit of a too much of a concave from the edge to the pole I can hew this axe but it has a tendency since it's cupped like this to dig in on me so I have to really watch it when I'm hewing with that axe this little axe here the one I, it's one that I got in Pennsylvania it's got a, a curve from the front to the back and it's fairly flat on the backs and it's it's a fairly easy axe to hew with this one being the big heavy axe uh, it also has the the curve from the front to the back a real nice sweep to it and it's really really good this way uh, actually it, it touches the, the straight edge touches from here to the out to the edge there again you can spend as much as you want to on axes you're not gonna find brand new old axes like this if you do it's going to be a rare rare thing to do but you can check old farm estates uh, antique stores like I say you can get on the internet and you, you probably will be able to find something that you can use so I hope this helps you some and later on we'll be doing some videos on sharpening these tools and appreciate y'all for spending time with me I thank you and God bless you please share and hit the little thumbs up and leave a comment. I do enjoy them. God bless you.